Hey everybody and welcome to another strategy session where we hope to give you a real estate professional a tip, an action, maybe a light bulb moment that you can take back and apply to your real estate business. My name is Joe Mangum. I'm the founder of The Strategic Agent and what we're going to concentrate on in this session is a conversation that we started like two video blogs ago and what we started talking about is if you are a client looking in on your business, what do they see and what do you have there to help propel them toward you? So we started this with a blog called, Are You Up In Front Business? And the second blog was, Is Your Business Cycle Leaking? If you haven't seen those, you can get those at the bottom here where you can go and click on those. Both of them have great giveaways and there's a great giveaway on this one as well. So let's just go ahead and start this conversation by saying this. You know, if you're a general brokerage agent, we think that we're out there selling houses, but we really aren't. What we are really out there selling is ourselves. We are out there selling our service package. And that is difficult because we know what we don't know. And it is hard to stand up and say, I'm the best one for you when you know all those things about your product. You know all those things that your product is, is bad at or is good at. It is a huge struggle. And I really believe that is why so many agents really find it difficult to create a value proposition. And that value proposition is used in so many places. It's used in your listing presentations, it's used in your profiles, it's used in any way that you communicate with your client about who you are and who your product is. So there's a couple of things I want to do here and the very first thing I want to do is, is go ahead and talk about the psychology of this because you know I'm a psychologist by education and I believe that by creating awareness for you an understanding for you of why we do that that is two-thirds of the problem right there. So let's go and take a look at the six reasons that we struggle psychologically of being out there and selling ourselves. All right, so here we are talking about what I call the psychology of value reluctance. And by the way, that is not a psychological term. I totally made it up, but it is represents exactly what we're talking about. The inability to really discuss what your value is to a potential client or prospect. Whether you're sitting in front of them at a presentation or whether you're putting information out on your website or you're putting information out in your promoters, but that reluctance to talk about why you're so dang good and they should work with you. So there are many theories behind this, and I selected the six I thought most represented the real estate community, and I'm going to talk about each one of the six. So the first one is what we call the comparison game. You know what I am talking about. There are all these people around you that are doing this and doing that, and you start comparing yourself, and it is such a dangerous game because you are comparing your back end to their front end. And that's just not fair. It's not fair to you at all. And this comparison works on your confidence and it works on your psyche. And it can really kind of throw you into a little spiral. I was talking to a coaching client last week who was doing that. And, you know, instead of motivating him, it unmotivated him. So how should you deal with this? Well, how you should deal with this is going in the exact opposite way and being happy for somebody. Wow, they are really killing it. They've really worked hard to do it. I'm so happy for them. And what happens is by doing that, and I know sometimes you're going to choke on it to get those words out, but by doing that, you're allowing your energy to be elevated. And that's exactly what you have to have is your energy elevated. I really love one of my favorite expressions that I use over and over. And if I'm not mistaken, it came from Dr. Phil. Yep, I'm quoting Dr. Phil, but it came from Dr. Phil and he made the comment to someone that when you get into that process of, well, they've got that and they're doing that, you are taking poison and expecting them to die. That's exactly what you're doing because it hurts you 
overall when you get into the comparison game. So just be happy for them and move on. All right, number two is called the imposter syndrome. Oh my, I have had this one many times in my life. You know what I'm talking about? Where you're like, I really don't know everything that people think I know. I really don't know what I'm doing. I have had that more times sitting in front of sellers. Like I felt like an imposter sitting there. And I'm sure you know what I'm talking about because you just don't think it, that you know enough. And it's kind of a funny place to be because you are the real estate professional. And if you're new at this game, it really digs on you, this imposter syndrome. But the thing you have to remember is you have a real estate license. You passed a test. You know a whole lot more than you think you do. All right, number three, underestimating our abilities. You know, that kind of goes hand in hand with the imposter syndrome. But we very much concentrate on what we don't know instead of what we do know. And that is a very slippery slope. And I, I've got some really bad news for you. Well, you might consider it's bad. Some of you might consider it's good news. But the bad news is you will never know everything in this profession ever. And I mean ever know everything. So some of you, that is bad news because you want to know everything in order to feel confident enough to go out and put yourself out there, but you're just not going to. Now, for those of y'all who like lots of um, change and lots of good stuff happening in the, you know, you, you like all the movement of the industry. That's good news for you. But you know, I just had this happen the other day. I had somebody who contacted me because I do a lot of work around CMAs and things like that. And she called me because she was trying to do a CMA on a house. And she said, Joe, I need your advice because I'm not sure what to do about this house. And she said, all right, tell, tell me what's going on. She said, well, it was a one bedroom, one bath house. And they've added three bedrooms and a bathroom. And they turned the other bathroom and the bedroom into a kitchen. And I said, all right, so what's the problem? She said, um, it is it permitted? None of it was permitted. Well, I had no idea what to tell her. 23 years in this business, and I was clueless. I really, well, I told her to run. I did notice that, but this is something that is very, very, very common. And so the, the attitude that I would suggest for you is, you know, I may not know that, but boy, am I going to have fun finding out. And so that is just the growth pattern. All right. Number four, you overestimate the risk of something. Now you might say, well, what's the risk? Well, you know, it's really funny. And I remember this well, when I started in real estate, there was no Zillow, Trulia or Realtor.com. I hate to date myself, but there wasn't. And what happened was in, in my first few months of being in the real estate business, I did what most of you do. I collected the the list of people that I knew and I was trying to make the decision about who to contact, who not to contact, et cetera, et cetera. And what I found myself doing is assuming I knew what people were going to think. And it would never, it was never good. Never in my mind did I think I was going to call somebody and they would go, wow, that's fantastic. In my mind, what I was thinking is they were going to get off the phone and they were going to go, oh my gosh, I can't believe she's doing that. She's going to be bad at that. I don't know if you've ever done that. I used to do it with open houses all the time too. I used to, when I would pick up the phone to call somebody a minute at the open house, I would overestimate the risk by saying, well, they're probably not going to remember who I am. They probably aren't going to be... Um, um, open at all to talking to me. They're probably not going to be, and I would think the worst. That is overestimating the risk. Many of us do this. And believe it or not, the thing that I've learned is that I'm making it up. I am making that up. I can't assume what someone else is thinking. I, I can't do it. I have picked up the phone and called people before, and they have said, oh, I'm so glad you called me. I really needed you. So you are making it up. All right, number five, 
downplay, we downplay the consequences of inaction. Hmm. Think about this one. What do I mean? We say, oh, people aren't going to choose us on our profile or people who just choose us on the profile, we go and do business with them. We downplay that inaction is a problem. It is. It's a huge problem. It, it just is. And so what we have to do is every little thing is important here. And one of the things that took me a while to learn in the real estate business is, is that it's not one big grand gesture. It's not one big mail campaign, campaign or not one big telephone call. It is a series of little things that builds the business. It's being great at all of those little things. And those little things matter. Those little things matter. So the way you talk about yourself or oh, I hear it all the time with scripts. People say to me, well, I just don't think I need to learn scripts. And I think I can shoot from the hip. They're downplaying the consequences of that inaction. It is very important because if you are shooting from the hip, you sound like a loser. Where if you have a polished presentation, people will be confident that you know what you're doing. All right, that's number five. Now let's go to number six, probably my very favorite, and it is called confirmation bias. What does that mean? When we don't do something, we actively seek information to to confirm what we think. All right, so let's go back to this. Let's go back to this script example I just used of, I don't need to do that because I'm pretty good on my feet. And then you see somebody who says, yes, I never do scripts. And I closed 50 houses last year. Oh, there it is. Well, very often that's the exception, not the rule. You also can do it with your profile pages of, oh, nobody's going to look at those profiles. And then you see somebody who's doing pretty good that they don't have any profile pages. So that's confirmation bias. Again, the exception exceptions are not the rule. There are exceptions to everything. So we go out there and we try to find confirmation of what we think. And by the way, that is not just in real estate. That is in virtually everything we do. All right. Those are the six. Okay. So did any of those resonate with you? Did you say, yeah, that's what I do? I totally understand that it may even be more than one of those. But again, my goal here was to help you understand where all of this is coming from and to go ahead and start getting some ideas germinated in your mind about how to change that. And so one of the things I do want to say to you, and I think it is, it will set a path for you here, and that is that our value proposition really is not about you. It really is about the client. You know, I often say that every client, whether they're a buyer or a seller, they all listen to the same radio station, WIIFM, what's in it for me. And so when you sit down and you start creating your value proposition or your unique selling proposition or your profiles, which consist of those, then you have to turn the switch. And the switch is this. What is the benefit for the client? How is it that this product will benefit the client? Instead of talking about you, 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 think about that. Now, I have a resource for you that will help you and will help you develop that idea a little bit further. You can click below to get a hold of that free report called It's Not About You, and that will help you create some of these things and kind of change your mental disposition on it. The other thing I've got for you, and if you've been listening to my other blogs, you know that I've been talking about this, but I partnered with somebody who is just a real estate marketing guru. And this person, her name is Shannon Ramos, and she has been a marketing manager for a couple of really, really large firms, and she totally gets real estate agents. She totally loves real estate agents. And her field of expertise is in this area, and we're going to be talking about 
profiles and she and I are collaborating on a free webinar and that webinar is called stop selling yourself short and losing clients even the ones that have been referred to you and that free webinar is coming up you also can click below to see when those dates and times are so you can decide what works for you and you can sign up for that so again this is the third piece of this conversation and I really want you to understand that this is a mental game. I have said many times before that the toughest, the toughest real estate market on earth is five inches wide and it lives right there. And so to be really good at these profiles and your value propositions really requires a change in the way you're thinking about it. All right. Go ahead and download the free giveaway because it will help guide you through it and make sure to sign up for the webinar where we're going to keep talking about this same really important topic. I hope to see you there.